Mike, have you spoken to Evan at all uh, regarding you know this, his frustrations and stuff, and, and how do you handle that as a coach to try to curb that frustration coming out? Yeah, you know, uh, you know I think Evan came out with a statement today, and uh, you know, I know obviously he's remorseful about it, but I think as a group, as an offense, we're all working and looking to improve and give something, you know, our our offense, our organization, the fans, something to be proud of. How do you feel about the Mike? Sorry, say that again. How do you feel about the boos? That's what obviously bothered Evan is the fact that the team and the offense is getting booed. As the play caller, how do you feel about yeah, it? Yeah, we got we to gotta keep on working to improve, and uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're doing this week. How difficult is it to get ready when it seems like the offensive line, you don't exactly know what it's – it hasn't been great to begin with, but now you don't even know what you're going to have. How, and we're, here we're on Thursday in a short week. How difficult does that make your job in terms of getting the offense ready for the game? It's just, I think right now it's just part of the it's part of the national, being in the National Football League. There's injuries everywhere. We have to be able to adjust and you know have a next man up mentality. And our guys have been great. It's why you know we've kept them you know all through off season, OTAs, training camp, and building that foundation with the guys. So um, you know the next guy who's up, he's ready to rock and roll, and that's that's who we give our trust into. After a Weekend like this, where Daniel gets sacked ten times. What are your conversations like with him this week? Yeah, you know, any any week, good or bad, we're always looking at anything we can improve on. So whether it's routes, whether it's protection, whether it's decision making, whether it's play calls, like we're really hypercritical on, on all those areas, and we're always looking for ways to improve. So as a staff, we'll go through it, we'll we'll dissect all the things that kind of came down and, and and what we saw, what we could do, could have done differently. And then we work on that throughout the week of practice and try to improve on those. Mike, how, how do you prevent these <clears throat> comments and the fallout from being a distraction for what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, I think you just you keep your mind focused on you know what the task at hand. That's today, right? Th today is the most important day that we get in there and put together a good day of work. Um, have you know have a great had a great meeting time, had a great install. You know we had an opportunity to review some of the tape and get on the film um, against Miami. So. That, those are the things that we're focused on today. Did he, did Evan say anything to the <clears throat> offense or the, to the team today regarding this? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think he made a he made a comment already um, in, I mean, in the no, post. I mean, not. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you know I'll let Dave's answer that, and I'm not going to get into the team stuff. But I know he came out with a comment today, and you know he said we said, and that, I think that's whereas you know as an offense, you know we got, we got to continue to find ways that we can improve. How different life is it to? curve that frustration particularly for young guys who haven't been through it as much and to, to, you know just to handle handle the booze and handle the frustration i'm sure that on social media and whatnot what what is as a coach and somebody's been around for a while what's your advice to try to handle that yeah you, you find the right you, you find the right guys guys that are mentally physically tough tough-minded and i think we have a lot of those guys on this on this team and that that's why they're here because they can handle that kind of stuff good or bad you gotta be able to handle the highs and the lows I think you know we, we we have guys on this team that are that are the same guy every day. Whether it's they're never too high, never too low, and you're, you have that consistency. So I think you build that. That builds confidence. That builds up yourself. And I think the, the more that you work at that, the better you get. If you were a player in this league, was, <clears throat> has it sort of changed or been amplified? You know the pressure that's on the players from the outside and from the fans. Obviously, social media is a significant part of that. I think I think you know as a as a competitor you're always you're always looking within you know I know for me personally I was I'm always looking within how can I do a better job um, how can I do a better job when I was a player how can I do a better job as a coach and always you know be again be hypercritical on all those little things that I can improve on. What's the impact how, how on does how does Daniel make better decisions when the pressure's coming? How does he maintain his poise and stick with the system, but at the same time know these ferocious guys are, are coming and, and how tough is that? Yeah, it's I think, you know, when I look at the offense, we look at eleven men operations. It's never just one guy that's responsible for it. It's all it's all eleven guys that have to be on the same page. And so we all gotta be working in unison. So when something breaks down, obviously like that's things bad things could happen. So um, we gotta make sure we minimize those things. We work on them, we study them, we prep for them, and then um, you know we go on on Sunday and execute. What's the Mike, impact on uh, what's the impact on uh, Waller when Bellinger isn't on the field, which we, we saw a lot on Sunday. Yeah, when we were Bellinger, Waller, those guys are their tight ends. I think, you know, obviously Bellinger, they all have, have their different roles and they're all important, very important roles. 
And so we have to have you know flexibility and be able to adjust and adapt does, when things like that happen. Does that make Waller have to block more though? Did he have to block more in that game than he had in previous games? Uh, I don't know the exact numbers on that, but you know, in, in that position, you're, you're going to have to have the responsibility to block a lot of scrimmage downfield or, or run passes. Like obviously, like you want to get more. Like when, sorry, a sorry. when a quarterback's struggling, Mike, it kind of becomes open season for criticism. So this is something that a defensive coach said about him and your and your scheme that Daniel has the easiest reads and the easiest concepts and he still doesn't throw the ball accurately. That seems like not just a criticism of Daniel, but of what you're doing. Would you argue that? I'd say each and every week's different. Every, you know, we gotta make sure that we have our schemes tied down, things that we wanna do on offensively, whether it's moving people around, whether it's um, changing things up in the running pass game. So we gotta build confidence. And that's what we work for every single week. Why has Waller not been as involved? Is it, is, it, is it something that you guys have not figured out how to get him the ball enough, or is it is it the protection issues? Is it a combination of all those things? What, what's your? Because obviously you, you brought him in here to make him a big part of the offense, which it hasn't been yet. Yeah, every every week's different, and I think you know we, we want to try and get everyone involved in the game plan and in the game and get them touches, and I think that's that's a high priority, right? You want to get all your playmakers the ball, and so that's what that's what again that's what we do every week and try to really hone in on that and, and give us schemes and offensive plays that we can do that with. Mike, I know you. You guys don't go against their offense, clearly. You're game planning for their defense. But in a week when you know what they can do on the board, I mean, this is a team that you, know, you don't put 70 up every week. Um, does that shape the way you attack a game or put together a game plan? At least in the back of your mind, you know what's happening on the other side of the ball? Yeah, you have to play complimentary football. That's every game. You know, It really doesn't matter the opponent, but we have to play complimentary football with, with uh, offense, defense, special teams. And that's doing our third of it. Um, so you know we're we're focused in on today, focusing on practice and, and getting the things corrected that we had from yesterday and from the previous weeks. And we're working we're working uh, to get better at those. Mike, how uh, on the third and eleven run, mm -hmm. Abel said there was a miscommunication. That pass was called. How does a miscommunication like that happen to the quarterback? It's, it's the opposite. Of the yeah, miscommunication, and you know, for me, I got to make sure I communicate that clearly to them. So there's there isn't any of that. You know, we don't obviously don't want those type of things happening on you know critical situations, third downs, things like that. So I can do a better job of that.